Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Witcher Circus. Hello Nodens, hope you're doing well. And today, we are gonna be playing with the Oppressive Jester team, also known as the Annoying Doggy team for some bizarre reason. So, someone goes first, um, for some reason it didn't show there. The Butcher Circus servers have been very flickery for the past, yeah, for the past couple of days. Though thankfully, I, well, quote unquote thankfully, I haven't been around for the past couple of days, so it has been quite a while since I made a video. I feel a bit out of practice already, both in making videos and in actually playing. And I'm immediately rewarded with a great added skills from my opponent's side, so we're already having a fantastic time. Now, thankfully for me, my opponent is playing with um, a team that kind of suffers against accuracy buffs and kind of suffers against Shoebaker as well. So the only decision I have to make right now is, do I want to go for the pull immediately? Oh, oh dear, this is bad. Or do I want to wait on it and go for the battle ballot first? They do have the Sorrenting Blast, so I, I'd rather just drop the battle ballot first while I still can. I'm gonna do that, give myself lots of accuracy on this team, which is kind of like an oppressive Arbalist team, which would normally have a high man here, but Jesus, another two crits, they don't even have buffs! I went second! I have 55 dodge, a minimum of 20 dodge, they have plus 8 accuracy there, and plus 10 here, and they're getting two crits. Jesus, okay, looks like all the commenting has really helped Nodens out, but we'll be fine, right? We'll be perfectly fine. We're gonna get a crit of our own, we're gonna go for the puncture on the Plague Doctor, we're going to abuse this funny team with four squishy DOD characters. This is the Blighted Sisters, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it is one of those funny teams. They go for the Sorrenting Blast, thankfully for me it fails miserably. And now I can choose on what to do. I might want to actually shoot the Plague Doctor and then stun her, rather than stun the Grave Robber here, but she could be annoying. She could be annoying, but I, I'd rather not, honestly. If she goes Shadow Fate, I don't mind it all that much, I don't think. Of course, I get pretty much a mineral on the Plague Doctor, but now I could go for a Stunning Blow, or I could even go for a Smite, but yeah, she will Shadow Fate. If I had dealt enough damage now, I would probably just stun the Shieldbreaker here. I might still do that, just stun the Shieldbreaker before she's able to do anything really bad, but I'd rather do this. And just pray that I do enough damage, <laughs> but between the Puncture Crit and then these two Bozo's actions, I don't bring a Plague Doctor down to zero? What is this? That is really sucky. But uh, it seems my opponent has very definite plans to kind of ruin me here, and they seem to be working rather well. So there's a few things that need to be done. Thing number one, I probably want to make this Shieldbreaker not act. Then I want to go for maybe a harvest, but overall this isn't looking too good. I they just dealt so much freaking DOT to my side that they might actually still win this, <laughs> even though they, they shouldn't really, they really shouldn't win this. But I'm thinking I might have to harvest you with a blood red coin. That might genuinely be what what this has come to. But at the same time, I really need to get rid of this plague doctor. I have a finish on the shield breaker, so I could go dirk stab into it, but uh, I really. I really want to harvest here, but, you know, it is what it is, we're gonna have to go for a Dirk Snap, we need to kill the Spike Doctor before she does anything too bad, the Crusader will just be on healing duty for the next couple of rounds, the Arbalist will shoot the Antiquarian, and we'll potentially get a finale off on her in a, in a round or two, well, hopefully next round, hopefully next round, so I don't have any bleed synergy for the Blood Red Coin here, but it's fine, for the amount of, uh, for the times that you would have the bleed synergy. It's still pretty cool. So I think I'm just going to go for the Expose first. Really no reason not to. And do I get the 50-50? Thankfully I do, the finisher does not fail me. The team doesn't have a high man with that Wicked Slice finisher for that extra uh, death blow capabilities, but it has a lot of other good stuff. I could shoot the Shoebreaker here, force her to sway, but I'm more worried about that Antiquarian. So I'm gonna go for this instead. What's probably going to happen here is the Antiquarian is just going to click and go protect me on the Shieldbreaker. Yes, good job, Nodens. That's exactly what I would have done. Which means that I will just go for the Puncture, most likely, and that should be a dead Antiquarian. I should have enough damage here with the Puncture. I could also just switch targets and start going for the Grave Robber instead. 
but I might want to wait a bit actually. I might want to wait a bit because they have this puncture. If I go for this right now, they could pull me, but then I just move back. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a, an immediate puncture, so let's just go for it. We go puncture, we do 11 to 30 damage. Or rather, all 11 to 30, that would be amazing, but no, unfortunately, you only do 11 to 20 damage on the on the Jester's finale, but it should be enough to, uh, to have a guaranteed chance of bringing the anti current down. So I will be going for it pronto before I get disrupted or anything of the like, so that means no more anti current, which means that it is now a 4v2, and I have two healing characters, which is really, really good for me. And of course, I also have a Chester, which is, you know, half a character at this point. Less than half a character. But they're gonna go for the pull on me. Thankfully, they don't get it, which means now it's just a heal turn or a shooting turn. Ah, oh, you know what I could even do? I could heal the Crusader and then stun with him. Yeah, they, even that could be an idea here. It looks a bit risky. For sure, how much time does this do? It's nice, but I'd rather just remove a turn. So I'm going to heal the Crusader, and I'm actually going to go for a Stunning Ball on the Shield Breaker, because removing one of their actions here is absolutely massive. I also have a 90% hit chance because of the... because of the Battle Battle that I dropped earlier, so... Yeah, we're really going to abuse the Shield Breaker here. Next turn, I'm going to go for the exact same thing. We have a... We have 9 Blight on there, so it should be enough to keep me alive. So we're gonna go Panic Tards to try to prevent it, and they will prevent it. I'll have to go for a double heal this time around. But before any of that happens, I'm gonna go for a nice Pierce on there. I don't really care about the protection, but of course Pierce kind of sucks as an ability. So, yeah. All I can do is 8 damage. It'll, it'll have to suffice, okay? It'll have to suffice. I might just go for a heal and then stun again. Ah, uh, it's so greedy, but I really want to do it. It's so greedy, but I really want to do it. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna have one of my characters at this storm, but I'm gonna go for the stunning blow on this shield breaker. Nothing is going to stop me. I really want to get this stun off on her. If I do, then she'll be at this door. Unfortunately, that 20 prompt from the protect me is actually really being a thorn in my side. Uh, she's really not enjoying herself here. She can't use the serpent sway, and I have finishers coming. And even though they can remove one of my characters now with the Panic Darts, they won't really do too much stress, so as long as it's not a 25 death blow, which it is, unfortunately, I should still be okay. Of course it does extra stress to one of them, and he goes irrational too. It does extra stress to the character I didn't want it to do extra stress to, but... Oh well, what can you do about it, right? I'm gonna go for the expose here. I, I get another 50-50 from the shield breaker, so good job once again, shield breaker. I'm, I'm digging it. You're doing very well. And now we're just gonna start spamming the heals on the crusader, with the crusader rather. And it's just a grave over that's left. We're just, we just gonna wait on the corpses, drop harvest here finally by turn 5, and everything should be a-okay. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. I miss her. But even then, it should still be fine. You're going to drop a Panic Darts here. It's gonna crit. It's gonna be pretty much a one-shot on my Jester. Actually, no, they're gonna go for the Shield Breaker. That is a tiny touch surprising. Well, but this should be the last turn they get to act, basically. Ah, but I still have enough Blight on me. I don't think I can justify going for, for what I want to go for, which would be a Puncture into a Stun. I don't... I generally don't think I can justify it, so... Instead, I'm gonna go for this. I'm gonna pray I get the debuff on there so we can start stacking crits on them. And I'm probably just going to heal the shield breaker and heal myself with the crusader here. I, I don't wanna leave him at this store. And with the minus 10, 10 accuracy you have from being at this store and the 32 dodge that the grave robber has, it would be really risky to just try and go for a stall on that, so let's not. 32% crit chance, we get a bit lucky, we get the crit on her. Now she's dropping to zero and it should be all over very, very quick for Noden, so I'm sorry. We finally get to play after so long, you finally get to drop your daily comment once more, but it's most likely going to be on the loss. That is a lot of stress, but it's doesn't really matter all that much. I'm just going to probably pierce into that. Now, look at that juicy crit chance. And of course, <laughs> it fails completely, as you do. I'm just going to actually go for the pass into a heal on the Chester. It probably won't make a difference, but maybe she will be at the store. Ah, oh, okay, never mind. Sure. Sure, whatever. You, you get the Jester. Fine, you get the Jester. Yeah, she would be at this door, so maybe her panic darts wouldn't do, well, 4 to 6 damage as they would have to. 
Uh, let's see, now it is a okay. The Grave Robber is gonna get the kill. Itty Wadidi. No more Jester. We don't need him. All we need is Mommy Amani and Raynal to finish this match righteously. We're gonna go for the expose. We get a crit. Is that enough? It is enough. Please don't get dodged. That would be most unfortunate. And she gets paranoid. <laughs> it's just the biggest dodge affliction. Good! Good! I should have gone for the stunning blow before that, but it's fine. We stunning blow her forever, and let's go for match number two. Alright, and here we go. Not so strange to a match number two, but this is actually the start of a best of five, because I went into a couple of ladder matches, unfortunately just too many novices and apprentices, so I wasn't able to get some actual practice in for the team, but here we are, we're playing against Kyokit once more, playing against the Goliath comp, and we're gonna see what we can do, right? So immediately this is maybe not the best matchup, especially with me not going first, but there's still lots of things you can do here, right? So my opponent immediately goes for the battle down because they know I have a genuinely decent amount of dolls, they just wanna make sure it, I don't get to abuse it, really. They have that extra 20 accuracy, so now they're perfectly fine. But I will immediately go for the Sunder Crusader, so they're not feeling, you know, as well as they want to feel. After that, game plan's probably gonna be Puncture, Shoot, Harvest, maybe Ballot myself. They're actually going to flare themselves, so... This does make me think a bit. Ah, I will, I will just go for the puncture here, I, I could have missed that, Jesus, I could have missed that, but thankfully I don't, and now, if they want to Holy Lance with the Crusader, they'll be left in a really, really unfortunate situation where the Leopard's in position 3, which might be fine if they land the Holy Lance and get a, and get a big finale off very, very quickly, but, you know, it is to be seen whether that actually happens or not, I'm... Uh, uh. I'm going to go for the battle down myself because I want to land the stun. I want to land the stunning ball on that chest, or I will eventually want to do it. I'm pretty sure the Arbals will still want to flare it. I'm quite surprised my opponent just doesn't all in and, and go ham. So since they don't do that, I'm actually just going to shoot the leper here and get a mid roll on it. Unfortunate, 13 to 23 damage. I was praying for a bit more. But since that didn't happen, now they're going to chop me and it's gonna feel really bad. Please don't get a crit. Please don't get a crit. Please don't get a crit. And okay, that's actually not too bad. I was expecting it to be health lot worse. I'm thinking I might actually go for a pull on the Arbalist here, first things first. Uh, pull on the Arbalist. Yeah, it wouldn't be too good for my opponent. No, but at the same time, also in the position to get focused down here. So yeah, regardless of what I do, it doesn't, does not look too good. I'm actually just maybe gonna go for an expose here on the leper. Perhaps if I get rid of the leper, everything will be a okay, right? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sniper shot into it. I'm gonna get out of harm's way with the crusader. I might stunning blow the enemy chester. Do something of the likes. I just don't want to take too much more punishment on the crusader for free. I feel like that would be too good. They're gonna sniper shot me here. They only do 17 damage, which isn't a ginormous amount. So I'm gonna go stunning ball on there, and I'm not gonna let them stack up that uh, that damage with the dark snap. If they go holy lance onto my jester here, which I imagine they will, they can very well miss, which they do. And not only do they miss, they also give me what do you call it. Um, they, even if they did hit, I have the battlefield badge with the medic's full plate, so I'd probably be fine. So I'm gonna go for the sniper shot here, if I get a crit it's probably GG, because they have, you know, they have the revenge on there, so now that I get this, they're in a really, really bad spot, because they don't really have enough damage to finale me, not with 9 to 16, it's very unlikely, and I have a 25 on this, unfortunately I don't have a finisher on this Chester, and I don't want to Dirk stab myself to Crusader is stunning blow range, so I'm actually just gonna do that and see how this goes. So they're gonna go for the sniper shot on me, which unfortunately does work out pretty well for them, but I don't really mind it all that much, because I'm just gonna double down on the stuns here, so they get rid of their flare to do that play, but I get to just go for a very, very accurate, very, very good stun chance there on the chance, or just lock him down, and the Leopard can't go for his own heals. If they try to rally the Flame onto the Leopard, if they try to rally him back to the match, 
then I will most likely just shoot into Pierce or Harvest or whatever, and they'll be down a character and I'll be ready to finale the next round, so, so we're all gonna be very good. I still have the finisher on the Shieldbreaker, so I'm quite confident she'll be able to do what I demand of her. So they're gonna go for the Sunny Will on me. I will just flare that, obviously. But before I flare that, I want to go for this, see if I get the death blow, which I do, so now I won't even flare it anymore. I'm actually just going to heal the, the Jester here, make sure they have to waste a finale, and after they waste a finale, it's probably game over. They might not even do enough damage, <laughs> that's the thing, if I get a good heal. Unfortunately, that's not a good heal, so yeah, I get the mineral. It's uncanny. Every time my opponent uses Medic's Full Plate, they go for the heal, they get a crit for 24. When I get to go Medic's Full Plate, I get a heal for 10 literally every single time they do 9 to 16 damage here so they could not do enough but you know it's very very unlikely that they don't do enough so i can't really i can't really count on it right now depending on what happens here my opponent might lose the chance because i have a, a sniper shot into a puncture just waiting they go for their arbalist turn so that means they're probably going to flare it all away and then I will just shoot, but then they will stun me with a guaranteed hit chance, actually, so... Uh, guaranteed hit chance, but not guaranteed chance to bring me down to zero, but... Actually, that's very surprising. They might just lose the Jester here, and this would be really, really good for me. Yeah, it's a 50-50 chance that I actually get that Jester down, so I'm very, very happy to take this, actually. And yeah, I'm quite happy about this situation. They might stun me down to zero here, if I don't get this 50-50, which would be a bit bad, but... Uh, it would definitely be a bit bad, but I still have two characters here. I can probably just flare the stun and then go for the Serpent Sway. That would probably be the move at this point. That would probably be the move if they go for it. I imagine they do. It really doesn't seem to be too much of a fair play. Ah, I suppose Zealous is one of them. I suppose Zealous is a play. In that case, I'm actually quite happy to just... Uh, they have finish on there. I am a teeny tiny bit worried that I get a crit here. Uh, I, I do get the crit, but I still won't get the death blow despite it being a 65, which is really unfortunate. That's actually really unfortunate. Okay, not no 50s, no 65s, the finisher is not paying off anymore. Sadly for me, the, the Jester got the better kill than the Shieldbreaker did, despite him not having a finisher. Yeah, it's whatever. It's whatever, ladies and chaps. I'm just gonna go for a nice little stunning ball in there. He's gonna be right back down to zero. Still a terrible death of resistance. And I'm just going to heal the Shieldbreaker here and she'll be okay. The heal should be more than enough to uh, keep her out of harm's way, even with a stunning blow. So I should be relatively fine here to still just take the match. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully just take the first match and then from the first match you just need to win the second and then it's only the last one and boom, we just win for free, right? That is, that is the plan, that is the hope, that is the dream. So I'm gonna go for the... Jesus Christ, he survives an 80? Like, come on, <laughs> seriously, come on. What is this? He's masochistic, yeah, I bet you he is. There is no justice in this world, is there? He survived a 50, a 65, and an 80. Do you see why I don't play damage teams without Bounty Hunter? This is one of the reasons. This is definitely one of the reasons. Jesus. Okay. I should be able to get the kill now. It's a 70. Oh my god. He actually lives. Can you believe it? He actually lives that. He actually unironically survives that. Okay, I heal for 20. He he, su he survived four death store checks. Far more than he should have. What are the odds of surviving a 50, 65, an 80, and a 70? What are the odds of getting that? Yeah, no, not too good, I imagine. Not too good whatsoever. I'm gonna go for an exposed kill here, I believe. I mean, the... Oh, I don't want to move is the problem. Maybe I just... Nah. Maybe I just go for the stun immediately, but... Ah, screw it. We go for this. Okay, 85. There we go. <laughs> At last. At long last. I finally get the kill that I needed. They're probably going to shoot the shield breaker here. I'm just going to sway, and then I'm going to heal the crusader, and everything will be a-okay. Yeah. So serpent sway, perfectly balanced ability, 35 dodge, two aegis blocks, 
And now he just healed the Crusader for a big juicy crit 24 heal. Yeah, Medic's full plight. It's balanced, isn't it? It's really balanced. I've gotten two crit heals with it, by the way. Two in a row. One on the Shieldbreaker that I got for 20 and now 24 on the Crusader. It works. It just works. If it's stupid, but it works and it's stupid. And it, it just seems to work more often than it doesn't. I could just kind of chill here for a bit, but I'm actually just gonna go... I'm probably just gonna do this. 6 to 11. <laughs> no Adder's Kiss moment. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a no Adder's Kiss moment. I could have just called Expose on there. But it looks like they just want to pull it anyway. That should be enough to get me afflicted. Ah, also calls two knockbacks because that's fair. That's totally fair. Alright. It's fine though. I'm going to probably just flare this little scenario away. And Holy Lance into that Crusader, so he goes down to zero. Yeah, that is gonna be the move here. She's still fine. I have a guaranteed hit chance, even with the minus and the dodge and all the bad stuff that's been happening. But yeah, Kyokit shouldn't take this match. No, not after not after the funny decisions that were made. I, and after all the freaking death blows that the Jets have survived. I still don't, I really don't feel like they can take this. They're gonna go for it, of course. And it works relatively well, but I'm actually just gonna go for a bowl here. This should be a knockback, which it is. That means they don't get to heal anymore. And while they will bring my Crusader down to zero here with the bowl, it should be okay because I will kill their... It's a lot of stress. I will kill their Crusader now with a 65. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Good job, Shieldbreaker. Actually, I wanted to pierce that. Yeah, Pierce would have been better, but that's still very good. That means that it's now a 3v1. My Crusader will immediately die to give my opponent hope. Actually, no, he doesn't immediately die. Give me the virtue. Give me vigorous. Give me the virtue. And I go hopeless. Okay, so it's actually still losable. Somehow, we can still lose this. He goes hopeless. There he goes, as you do. <sighs> it's it's unironically losable. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Do we pierce into it? Do we expose into it or what? Like, well, what's the game plan here, Shep? I guess we... We lose, then. Yeah, I guess we just lose. That's probably the game plan here. Double crit 10. Do I get a knock... <laughs> I get the wrong knock back. Okay. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. I still have another Serpent Slay. I should be okay here. I don't want to give them just too much ball of value to to get rid of my shield breaker also damaging my Arbalist. They're probably going to shoot the Arbalist here. No, they're actually just going to ball up. Please don't push the corpse. Okay, they didn't actually push the corpse. Good. Very, very good. I want to heal on there while I still can. So let's just drop a nice juicy heal. And now I'm just probably gonna go for the pierce. 7 to 12 damage, it's not too bad. I am selfish, but it's gonna take a few thirds. Yeah, it is gonna take a few thirds. All they can do now is bola, but I am healing way too much for them to actually bring me down to zero here. And 9, that's probably the max roll, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm actually just going to shoot them here. So this should do a lot of damage. There we go, crit 26, and yeah, this is GG. Okay, it was close. It was close, but this should just be GG here. Let's go for another Pierce. Arbol is down to zero. My, my Arbol is still chilling. Did you have finish on there? But as long as Selfish doesn't pass, and I don't get double knocked back here, I should be okay. Selfish, please do not. I, I am not in the mood, but... <laughs> it's literally... I come back to the Butcher's Circus after five days. Come back to the Witcher Circus after five days, and then I have to deal with this. Yeah, it's fine though, we still take the W. Match number one goes to me, and let's go for match number two. Alright, and here we go, straight into a match number two. This time against Ship Stress, of course, and I'm playing with the oppressive Arbalist, so... This should, as long as I go first, it should be pretty good for me. Uh, of course I don't go first, because there's no justice in this world, but... This should still... This should still be relatively good for me, because I have the repulse, I have the puncture, so it should be quite fine. 
Unfortunately, I don't get to go first, so yeah, they're just going to transform slam here. It's gonna suck naturally, but I'm praying that I can still make something work regardless. So first things first, I have a choice. I wanna kill the Hound Master, or do I wanna kill the Able? Answer is both, but probably the Hound Master first. So let's just get to it then. Let's go for the Vendetta here, get his knowledge down to 10. Then we go Holy Lance, we go for all the nice moves. The Shoebreaker now has Net and Eerie Eye. Honestly, against Kyokit, maybe not the best idea to bring Eerie Eye. He doesn't really play Antiquarian or, or like Grave Robber all that much. He prefers Chef Stress, number one. So maybe not the best system move, but I wanted to use it anyway. So, you know, here we are. Here we are, right? Um, it's time to go for the Holy Lance. We get a crit on it. So, <laughs> you do. I get a crit on it, so now he's down to... Not very happy amounts of HP, he's down to 1. Thankfully it's enough for him to just live. Yeah, it is enough for him just live, to just live, like, he just very, very, very barely, he, he survives. I might actually justify going for a shot here on the Abomination. I do not get to go first. But I might actually justify going for a shot here on the Abom. Just do not give them regen value, question mark. I will give them region value regardless. Well, might as well do something, right? Yeah, let's go for the puncture anyway. Let us go for the puncture anyway. They're going to regen on here, which is a waste of one of their command turns. I mean, they will just heal here, which is a waste of the, one of the command turns. They could harry, but I wouldn't harry personally. Like, I feel like they're fine just healing here because they're always going to get that regen value. And then after regen, they're going to go for the harry. At which point I will probably just get the kill with a Wicked Slice or perhaps even a Duel's Advance, meaning that I will get a kill, but it's a relatively even trade depending on this Hound Sarah, which is at least one crit. Yeah, one crit. So it could have been worse, could have been better. One crit is not, you know, it's game over for sure. Yeah, it is for sure not game over. They do have the potential of guarding there, so I'm actually just gonna go for the Sniper Shot. Let's just do that, bring the doggy down to zero, and now we should get a kill here with the Harman. Everything should be okay. They might guard, I, I wouldn't personally, so I don't think they will. They're probably just gonna be transform bile and just go ham as you do. Uh, oh, they're gonna manacles. They are gonna manacles. Do they get it? Yes, they do, unfortunately, so maybe I should have holy lance. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have holy lance, not sniper shot ship. Ah, okay, that's a bit unfortunate, but I still have two shots of getting the death blow here, so I should still be okay. An 80, and, and then 25 to kill, and I'll have a 20, uh, 40. So yeah, this might actually get a bit, a little bit rough here, if I don't get this death blow. I do have the other skiss, which I will very much go for. It should be still guaranteed hit chance, right? Almost guaranteed. I don't get it. But I do get the blights at the very least, so they'll go. They're gonna get another hound Sari off, unfortunately. But I'm praying that it's enough. It probably isn't. They've probably done too much here for me to win at this point. Yeah, they're gonna get another hound Sari off with a command buff. Ah, it's it's a bit too late, isn't it? Yeah, it might be a bit too late. Two Harrys. No, I, I'm gonna lose this. Yeah, it sucks to be me, I guess. Actually, actually, maybe, maybe there is hope. Just maybe there is hope because they didn't get a crit on there as Kyokit usually does. So this is an 80, we hit the 80, we're probably gonna go for a pull. Or even maybe a I, I don't think I think it's too late, but I'd like to pull the abomination, maybe even stun him or something like that. But I'm probably gonna pull the man at arms. Which isn't ideal, let's be honest. Uh, because the abomination just transforms and kills all of us anyway. <laughs> so uh, regardless of what I do here, it's not ideal. Yeah. Everything kind of sucks at this point, but I'm going to stun the flash one before any more Rain of Sorrows go off. And then it's just going to be pull on the Men at Arms into probably a shot on the A-bomb. I, I probably still do enough damage here that it's decently good. Yeah. We kill the A-bomb, then the flash one on his own isn't really enough to just like 1v4 into, into this, especially not a Crusader and all that. So we should still be okay, as long as we get rid of the Abomination, which, of course, easier said than done. Yeah, way easier said than done. There goes the second round of horror. Perhaps if I get a Virtue, yeah, if I get a Virtue, this would be amazing, but... 
Yeah, we'll see. 7 to 13 damage. I'm tickling those freaking Bellows. Oh, the Bellows are making my life hell. One command buff and then spam Bellows. Kyokit plays my team really well. You know, it's it's pretty cool to see how he plays my team. Maybe I go Virtuous. If I go Virtuous here, it should be GG. Yow, not fearful, dear girl. That was probably the worst thing I could have gotten. <sighs> Too fearful, seriously. Two fearfuls. That's what you gave me. My god. Not one, but two fearfuls. Yeah, this one is 25% damage, very high pass chances, uh, no stress to the other characters. For this, another fearful. Okay, that's a good one, though. That's not. What did my Highman get? He got hopeless. It could be worse, I suppose. Could be a bit worse, but yeah, four afflictions. And I don't see any kill on the way. Nah, if only I went first. If only I went first, this would have been a hell of a lot better. But it's still winnable for sure. Yeah, definitely still winnable. As long as I don't get too many passes with the fearfuls. Or with the three <laughs> fearfuls that have 12% pass chance each. As long as I don't get too many passes with them, I should be a okay. Yeah. Yeah, two freaking three fearfuls, huh? Oh, he is dazed now. I won't let the flash one get his healing off. I still have punctures. Yeah, it's it's preoccupying for sure, but they're going to go for the punish here. Did he get the bleed? Okay, thankfully no. I am dropping to zero with the higher man, so I probably want to drop a heal. But at the same time, I don't really. Immediate pass, by the way. I don't get it. I genuinely don't understand how Kyokit has this good RNG against me. Like, it is so unfortunate. It is genuinely so unfortunate. Dude, the RNG that he, that he has against me immediately, fearfully, immediately passes. Ah, oh, dear. It should be fine, though. I just need an, another bit of luck on my side. I feel like they could have guarded there. I feel like they could have guarded there because now I'll probably do a damage and then they won't be able to save. Because if they guarded, then I'd have to puncture and shoot, but by then it would be too late for me to actually get the kill. So now I'm actually just going to do this, do enough damage and potentially just immediately kill the Abomination. I might die before then to a punish? That's definitely a possibility. If it's a crit punish, that is. Yeah, if it's a crit punish, I'm screwed. I I'm just immediately dead. Not a crit punish though, so I should be okay. There's extra stress. Yep. There's extra stress. Thank you, Fearful. Thank you, Fearful. Real nice from you. Dear God. I, we have to go for a puncture kill. It's the Hail Mary. It's the puncture kill. 25. We don't get it. They're just going to heal here. My higher man is dead. I can't deal with them. They heal for 13. Okay, Crusader. I need a big and juicy smite crit. The juiciest smite crit you've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to surrender now, but nah, there's still hope. There's still hope, believe in me. Please don't heal again. Forget about your abomination turn. <laughs> don't heal again. <laughs> Anything but another heal. Oh, if they don't heal, I will just... The crit punish just wins the match here. Yeah, I'd go for the crit punish. I'd go for the crit punish. It's not enough. Did he get the bleed? No bleeds! No bleeds allowed. Okay, it's still, it's still winnable. Come on, come on, I need the stun, yeah, guaranteed stun, they can't get rid of the guards, so we should get a kill here, and then it's a 3v2, 3v2, clearly winnable, with my 2 HP Crusader, clearly very, very winnable, I'm gonna go for another 25 heal, uh, it's, it's not a 25 now, it's a 40, but, okay, we get the 40, it's actually genuinely and ironically winnable, I just need the fearful to not say no, and we win this. Okay, it's actually winnable. Alright, let's do this. Let us do this. I'm so glad I didn't surrender. I don't want to hurt this flash wand. I want to kill the, the men at arms somehow. Before the before the flash wand is killed. With these two fearful bozos are gonna be on healing duty, while the shield is just gonna be going ham with Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well the shield is just gonna be going ham with <laughs> Ah, why does he do that? Freaking Ah oh, the extra stress. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay. I will just click myself and heal, right? To have that heart attack recovery. If he passes, 
he dies. But thankfully that doesn't happen. I think I'm just gonna drop a heal on there. See, I give myself heart attack recovery, that's pretty good. Only 4 HP though, a punish will just oof me immediately. Yeah, I'm dead to a punish. I might have to... I might have to do something about that. I might have to puncture the MAA. Yeah, definitely the move I have to go for here. I have to play... Yo, 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 yo. I have... Yo! Why another pass? Yo, 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 I have 95% move chance on the men at arms. 95! With the net. 90 freaking 5% move chance on that men at arms. Extra stress to both my characters. Okay, now the, the game just didn't want me to win this one. The game has seen that I haven't played in four days. They want this video to be extra long. We're gonna go to match number three. Alright, and here we go straight into match number three. This time with another Shieldbreaker team. This, this really is Shieldbreaker day. And I'm playing against Kalashnikov. And once again I go second. Can I please stop going second? question mark. Okay, that's very helpful though. <laughs> I, I take those. I take those, thankfully. It's time to stun the Abomination because we hate him, and then we're going to get rid of this Occultist because we hate him even more. So we're gonna pull the Occultist, shoot the Occultist. Actually, do we? <sighs> pull the Occultist. With, with whom, Shepard Doggy? With whom do we pull the Occultist? That is the question. I suppose with uh, with the Bounty Hunter, yeah. So for the Bounty Hunter pull, let's do a little bit of that. They could guard, and I will not puncture that card, because then the Cultist goes to position <laughs> 1. So if they guard you, I will not puncture, I will actually add their skits, but yeah, they, they're playing Kalashnikov, they want to the command buff and just go crazy. So for now, I'm actually not gonna do that, I'm gonna do something else entirely. I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah, I am gonna go crazy. So many moves, all of them terrible, really. Actually, this one isn't too bad. It's unlikely, but if it does work, it would be actually really, really good, because that's an abomination down. She Shieldbreaker, she's A tier. I'm sorry, everyone that thinks, like, oh, Shieldbreaker sucks, she has puncture, she's a puncture bot, and everything else about her is bad. It's not. She, she has actually genuinely decent, genuinely good moves. I love her. I mean, she is my ex wife, but. <laughs> I do very much like this Shieldbreaker, I think she's a very cool character. Her base stats are kinda bad, but she has that Serpent Sway for survivability, she has that, um, what do you call it, she has the Puncture, which is obviously a meta move, she has the Adder's Case, which is a very decent move, you have those three base moves, and then you have Pierce, which kinda sucks, you have Expose, which is decent, Impale, which is trash, and Captivate, which is trash. So yeah, you kind of have three moves, which are her base kit, and then you have to pick and choose between the other two. And in terms of Trinkets, she can kind of get away with not bringing dodge sometimes. Kind of. And only sometimes. So yeah, don't, don't expect to not bring dodge like the overwhelming majority of the time, but she won't always have to do that. Yeah, not always. So game plan here is I'm just going to puncture the Houndmaster, I'm going to lance the Houndmaster. I don't have command buff actually, or a battle ballot. I'm not playing the first team anymore, but it should be okay. I should still, I should still get a hit on here if I'm not too unlucky. And I should be able to actually reposition my Arbalest back to, well, unfortunate, back to position 4 if I play my cards right here, which is actually pretty cool. I might not even Ebola, but it's probably the best move to Ebola here. Not just Sniper Shot. Yeah, it's probably the best move. It's also going to bring the Abomination down to 0, most likely. Yes, it will. Look at this. The DOT that we have going between the Caltrips and the Adder's Kiss is genuinely good. So yeah, this is Shieldbreaker WT. I just replaced the Abomination with a Shieldbreaker, and I've playtested this before. It's actually the first video I'm doing on it, but I have playtested it before offline, and I do genuinely enjoy it. It is quite decent. It's not amazing, mind you. I still think regular WT is better, but this team gets that first kill usually with more ease than WD does, especially against these protective teams, because the protective teams are always going to have like 
the position 3 character protecting position 4, or they're gonna have a doggy which just has like 92 dodge protecting someone. Shieldbreaker doesn't care, it's not like all the other sun characters which have to care about stun resistance, have to care about dodge, have to care about positions. Shieldbreaker literally does not care, she just goes puncture and the guards disappear, they cease to exist. And that is very, very good if you're playing uh, if you're playing a marked team that kind of hates cards, which is literally every single one of them. So yeah, at this point, I might just add a skiss here again. Uh, let's just do this. At least some guaranteed damage would be nice. Yeah, some guaranteed damage would be very nice. And I'm just going to snipe a shot on there. Or will I? Hmm. I don't want to be in position. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to knock the, the doggy back, but if he heals here, then I'll just puncture. It'll probably do enough damage anyway. So, yeah, my opponent really can't do anything. They have numbing instance and Pitfighter's Helm the Men Arms, so it's uh, unnaturally tanky Men at Arms for a team such as the Kalashnikov. But it just didn't work out too well because even though I only have one stun character, they really can't do anything with that. And there's just three characters dead by round four. I will say my offense worked out relative like really well. I got the crit with the Arbalist, I got I got the pulls, they they failed the first pull on me, so yes, stuff did go pretty well. I went crit address kiss on the abomination, so I wouldn't expect the, the results to always be this good. But I still think the team did pretty well here. So Crusader, you probably should have waited for the Shield Wicked's turn, but I'm actually just going to drop a heal on there. And then just try to shoot. Yeah, we're just gonna try to shoot and maybe. maybe just pierce. Yeah, Kyokit just surrendered because, uh, you know, it's a 4v1. So it's 2 1 for me and let's go for match point for myself. Alright, and here we go straight into a match number 4. And this time I'm playing the double squad. So, 4 Shieldbreaker teams for you, ladies and gents. 4 freaking Shieldbreaker teams. They're playing the exact same setup and. Well, now I have a Flagellant instead of a Crusader, which might actually be a hell of a lot better this time around. I have Snuff on the Arbalist. I don't get to go first, so my hit chance is kind of meh. Like, really, really meh, actually. So I'm gonna go for the pull anyway, knowing very well it could have missed, but I kind of have to go for it. This Occultist needs to be focused now. Sigin Embrace is just too powerful of a move. I don't even have Exposed to counter it, because... Expose is nice, but you kind of need to pierce on the damage team, so... They're going to transform, probably slam my Flagellant? Or do they slam the Shieldbreaker? Interestingly, they're gonna slam the Shieldbreaker, that's a pretty interesting decision, it could have very well missed, I don't really care too much about it, honestly, yeah, no, honestly, I really don't care too much. I think I will just actually keep her turn and just immediately go for a punish on the A-bomb. I get a nice juicy crit on it. Did they have class with the beast last time? I can't remember, they died very quickly. But I suppose that's, that was because of the Adder's crit kiss. Uh, Adder's, ah! Adder's kiss crit. So what's what I'm actually going to do here? I'm actually going to move forward twice with my shield breaker. And I'm still going to shoot this occultist. <laughs> Surrenders! Wait, did he surrender or was it a desync? No, he just surrenders and sends GG's. Yeah, GG's. So, can Crusader do that? Question mark. Can Crusader do that? No, he can't. Who can do that? Who can do that? Can the Abomination do that? No, he can move back twice. He can only move forward once. Only the Shield Mommy can do that. So, yeah. To all you Shield Breaker doubters. She's cool, she's good, and that's gonna be 3-1 for Shepard Doggies. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!